Hey. hey! Check this out! This is Fonzie's bike from the show Happy Days. It's a 1952 Triumph. It has a 50 engine in it. I can't remember what it was, but anyhow, it has not been running in a long time. It was together when it rolled into the shop, but what fun is it to have it in the shop together, right? The task at hand was, hey, let's get this running again. Like every running item, you have to have air, fuel, and spark. Well, we had air, there was no fuel lines, and no spark. So that means it ain't gonna run. I went through and um, took it down actually to a gentleman uh, at PT Customs. Kevin and I walked through things. He helped me out with some cables that were bad. Ultimately, he went through the magneto because I had absolutely no spark. He went completely through it, replaced the armature that was in the inside. He actually had a new old stock sitting on his shelf and now this magneto will make spark. The second item was these fuel lines. So the fuel lines, a couple of them are missing um, and the carburetor was stuck. So the carburetor's actually just been soaking in parts cleaner just to kind of clean up the outside and get the general varnish and gunk off it from sitting. Uh, I need to pull that apart. I have some fresh gaskets for it. Make sure that, you know, silly stuff like the float needle is not sticking and all that type of stuff. Being a 1952 British automobile, bicycle, motorcycle here, it uses Whitworth tools. If you are not familiar with Whit Whitworth tools, they are not metric and they are not imperial or standard or American, whatever you prefer to call a fractional uh, wrench set. So even though this reads one fourth Whitworth, you can see that is not a quarter inch. Uh, so these are a real, I don't know any other way to say it than bastard relative to the wrench world. Thankfully, one of our, my coworkers happened to have a set of them. He's a Triumph guy and had a set of sockets and a couple wrenches, enough basically to make this work. So again, my task here today is get the magneto put back on, that goes back in first, get the carburetor gone through, get it cleaned up, see what's in there, and then the oil tank has got a whole bunch of gunk in it. I'd like to flush the oil lines, because if the tank has gunk, I'm betting the lines do as well. And the last thing you'd want to do is start this up, starve it for oil, and of course, let the piston start doing the uh, external dance, if you know what I'm saying. So that's where we're at. We'll keep you posted here as we go. And hopefully this thing will fire up right around the parking lot within a day, maybe two days at the most. This is the Fonz's bike. Did I say that enough? This is the Fonz's bike. If you grew up watching Happy Days or maybe just watched some of the reruns before Chachi came involved, this was cool. And the Fonz is cool. And you can't sit here with the Fonz's bike and not say, hey, 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 hey. All right, since I want this to fire up and run fairly well, I am going to take this carburetor part, this SU carb. Uh, the float was stuck in here, um, but I do have that moving now. And uh, now I'm just gonna take everything else apart and clean it up and put a couple fresh gaskets in it. There is nasty in here. This bike's been sitting for about 20 years, I'm told, which means it's probably been sitting closer to 30. All right, you can see I have the carburetor completely tore apart. And I have one piece, this little brass piece still to clean up, but otherwise I am done from a disassembly and cleanup standpoint. Now, the initial thought is we want to be able to start and run this motorcycle and drive it around the block, so to speak. So to do that, the carburetor does need to be good enough to run, not just sit on a stand and pour fuel down it. So I'm going to need a carburetor kit because I found some seals that are bad that I cannot replace with a simple O-ring. I could certainly replace a fiber washer with something that's easy enough, and even the little brass washers here and there. That's not an issue, but what I found in the float assembly, that's what this is, an ex, really an external float bowl. The float itself has been repaired, but it seems to be 
you know, holding air, if you will, so it will float. It's not going to sink on us. But this is pretty heavy, so it still may sink. And if it does sink, that means it won't shut off the fuel flow coming into the carburetor. And of course, then I'll have a flooding issue. Now, this particular carburetor will never shut off, uh, at least as it sits right now, because it's completely missing the needle and seat and the little float fork in here. So I need to get that. So at the end of the day, what this amounts to is I have a carburetor kit on order. It should be here in a couple days, and then I can finish this portion of the project. So in the meantime, I'm going to be over at the motorcycle itself, and I need to start getting it ready because I can put the carburetor on last. But I have a couple other things to do before I can get there and need the carburetor. So I can get my magneto put back in. I can get my oil tank cleaned up and put back in, or at least ready to go back in. And then I can also get my brake and clutch cables in pretty good shape as well. But I'll make sure all that stuff works. And I have a fresh kill switch to go on here. This one is actually no good whatsoever. I'm not gonna get too excited about a battery because the battery only runs the headlight in this scenario. I don't need a battery to start it. It is uh, magneto based. So as long as I can kick it enough, it will spark. All right, since this has been sitting and the look of the oil that's in the bottom, the oil tank, it's gummed and just nasty. I'm gonna take the liberty of pulling off these little oil injection lines here. You can see there's one here, comes up here, wraps up on this side, and so on and so forth. Spray some carb cleaner through them, break up any oil, make sure it, it's free flowing. The last thing I wanna do is start this up and start and starve the top end of the engine or any part of the motor of oils. All right, so when Pulling these oil lines off here. These are just a, a fitting soldered to a brass tube or a copper tube. And you can see right here that this one appears to at least be cracked up top. So I'll take just a soldering kit and see if I can get this to, uh, to solder back together and not have a, a noticeable crack there. Our status right now is when I took the mag out, I already set the uh, gears, the cam gears at there's zero marks, and I'm also at top dead center. All right, how do I go through and set the timing? Where does it need to be at? So what we're going to do is, this is the magneto. It has a set of points in it. I need to know exactly as it's spinning where the points open. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and put a little mark on this part, because this the points actually spin relative to this uh, housing. So I put a little mark on the points and then I'm going to put it in the motor and use a drill to spin this in and then make a mark when the, basically when the plug fires. So to do that, what I'm going to use is a, um, a timing light. A timing light should be fine. Put the plug wires on, have the, have the plug grounded to the chassis, spin it over. It makes its own power and that'll give me a strobe. So as it strobes, I can then, you know, like I said, put that mark where it needs to be at. Because you'll notice why I'm, why I'm going through all this headache is the timing gear and the mag is not keyed. So this can be in any position it needs to be at. Reason being is it obviously takes out manufacturing process, tolerancing and all that. You don't have to be so dedicated on where your keyway would be at. So once that's up in here, you have you know this can be anywhere it needs to be at. I have it marked where it was, but that does not place, of course, where the mag needs to be at. From everything I can tell, it, it needs to be at 38 degrees advanced or set up for 38 degrees advanced. This has a cable, so a, um, instead of an automatic advance or centrifugal advance, it has a mechanical advance, a lot like a Model A does. So at full advance, it needs to see 38 degrees. How I'm going to get that is have this zeroed here, take this, put a degree wheel on it, rotate the motor backwards, then rotate it forward 38 degrees advanced, set my mag in at zero, and that should be correct. Fingers crossed on this one. So the crankshaft doesn't have a thread in it like it's supposed to. So the idea is this little stud threads into the crankshaft. 
this threads on here and as the crankshaft is rotated this is firmly attached if you will to the crankshaft so now you have a dial indicator that that moves now the problem I have is this doesn't have a thread this ID is basically 248 the OD on this is 244 so pretty stinking close close enough the thread on this is a Whitworth it is not metric and it's not standard so I can't just simply tap the crankshaft and it's also hardened most likely so what I'm gonna do is this will thread into this adapter and I'm gonna remove the head off the end of the bolt use the shank to slide in there and locate to I'm gonna put a nut on here and I'm literally going to use super glue to attach the nut to the face of this because all I'm after is this portion to be fixed to here so it's going to be I'm going to try to get around this without having a thread there again the whole idea is that this shank this part of the fixture is just held to the crankshaft there's no torque put on it um, as far as that type of stuff it just has to stay there as I rotate the crankshaft it has to stay in position the little bit of super glue will not stay forever, regardless of the old hard hat commercials. Um, I'm positive I'll be able to just lightly tap it, it'll come right off, and we go down the road. So that's my plan. So that is in, mag is at least secured to the case. It is sealed. Now I need to take and put the spark plug wires on, take a spark plug, get it grounded out. I'm gonna use a little piece of hose actually to try to spin this with a drill motor. And then let's see, that, verify that we have spark obviously, but at the same token, we're going to set that uh, position where the points are opening and closing. This is where she sits. From everything I can read, it doesn't appear that there's any big deal what, what or where you use, as long as you use something to mark this, get it in position. I have my new spark plugs in. I got them vice grip to the, the uh, cast iron head here. Not too tight, obviously. Um, enough to make connection. I got both of them done. And then using a quarter inch drive on the drill motor, we're going to spin the mag counterclockwise and actually just use a piece of rubber hose here to make the connection. Um, it doesn't take much, it doesn't have a lot of drag. Um, in fact, I wanna show you how quick a magneto makes spark. So I can turn this by hand and make spark. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over on the other side. I have my timing light over here. Now this timing light is way overkill for what I need to do. All I need is a strobe, but I have to have something that triggers and a timing light does exactly that for me. We're just gonna clamp our inductive pickup onto our plug wire. I'm gonna use the timing light. This wall should automatically strobe. And as, as the mag makes power, this will strobe, and that's where we will see the points rotating around, and that's where I need to put that mark relative to the case. So we are at 38 degrees before top dead center, so 38 degrees advanced. Our points are set, so they're just opening at 38 degrees. It also corresponds with the mark that we had on here earlier. The last step is to take this timing gear that goes onto the end of the mag. It doesn't really matter where these line up anymore. That was just a point of reference when I pulled it apart. But it needs to go into here, like so. Now, instructions are, 
take a socket that fits in that hole and tap it honestly with a hammer. It's specified a three pound hammer, but I don't have a three. I'm going to use this little bit lighter one, but give it a nice tap. And the idea is you're going to seat the timing gear um, tapered into the taper of the uh, mag and then going to use the nut and washer to pull it tight. If you don't tap the gear to the mag, what will happen is you will rotate the mag when you go to tighten the nut down and your timing will be off. So that's supposed to be my gentle hit. Feels pretty good that way. So at this point, I'm just going to get my carburetor on, oil tank, get this cover on, plugs in, and clean up the fuel system, and we will be ready to fire it up. Okay, we are in day two, and I received my carburetor kit, and I got a fresh, well, maybe it's not a fresh float, but I have a better float than what this one is. So even though this is a used float, because they don't make brand new ones any longer, it is in much better condition than this repaired one. I have a fresh needle and seat, new gaskets everywhere and seals. So now at this point, I just need to get this all put back together and then get it ready to be on the bike. That's it for the uh, rebuilding of the carburetor. Everything is seemingly back in the right spot. And at this point, I need to get it put back on the bike and get some fuel lines ran to it. Everything is run that I can think of as far as fuel, air, and spark. Clutch should function as well. Brake should function reasonably. And we know we have spark to the spark plugs. It'd just be a matter of putting some oil in the oil tank and fuel in the fuel tank. And we'll be ready to fire it up. All right. We are completely assembled with the Fonz bike. I have some fuel in the tank. We had a couple little leaks. We squared them away. And we have some oil in the uh, reservoir as well. Now it's a little bit of a test to the pudding here to see if we did this right. So uh, keep in mind that these are a lot of hopes and dreams of mine personally to get the Fonz's bike running. So I I'm really praying that this is gonna work out the first time. And if it doesn't, well, we'll figure it out. <laughs> hey, how cool is that? I can't even explain how cool it is to be sitting on the Fonza's bike. I remember coming home from school and watching it on TV. Dude, we gotta get this out of this shop and out on the road. Well, at least the parking lot. So cool, so cool.
Hey, how cool is that? The Fonza's bike is alive and running and we did it. It hasn't been running in 20 plus years. I just got to take it for a ride around the parking lot here in a childhood dream come true. I can't even explain how cool this is. I hope you guys all enjoyed it as well. Please click and subscribe, follow along, because quite frankly, you never know what we might run into and get running. See ya. Oh man, just awesome. I never thought I'd be working on a famous person's bike, not at all. Anytime I mention it to anyone, they're like, no, beep, it. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, no, really. <laughs>